Hello and welcome. for coming to Jarek135 the spore says oh look Latin yes indeed I guess I should have taken that instead of French well I don't know that depends if you're gonna go to France I have I think French is more useful. Is this Latin that doctors learn? I'm not sure about that. So. I believe this is ancient Latin because uh, the book is full of uh, ancient vocabulary like slaves and stuff like that. Oh, hey, thanks for following uh, 20 Clark up. I appreciate it. So today we're listening to the soundtrack of um, Rome 2 Total War. Which I haven't played actually. I only played the first one. So you understand ancient Latin, right? Well, I'm learning. Would you understand a person if you could go back to ancient Rome? Ah, uh, good question. Probably not, to be honest. But it's fun to study it. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I'm not gonna talk much about the game today, about Historia Realis, because I don't have much new stuff to say. <laughs> you guys are like relinking on Discord. Thanks for linking it again. Um, Set the phone notification level to mentions. Sure. Hi, Nuka Cola. Welcome to the stream. After the the stream, I'm gonna do some Discord changes. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, you can go to historiarealis.com. The address is in, on screen, and there's a link to the Discord at the bottom of the page. Uh, thank you, Locust. Welcome to the stream. Okay. So, last time I barely read any Latin because I was talking so much about the game. So this time, more Latin. Let's uh, let me know if the music's too loud. This this Rome 2 soundtrack is kind of intense. Um. It just says if. If you weren't to, if you went to ancient Rome right now, would you understand Romans talking? No, <laughs> I wouldn't, to be honest. But uh, maybe one word or another. But um, I'm not like. 
confident I, I would understand them. But uh, as you're gonna see, I can actually understand the reading this text like quite decently. It's just that I think spoken Latin is something else. But anyway, we uh, last stream we when we stopped, Metis was uh, knocking on the door. And uh, Lydia Imperat Intra, uh, Lydia commands, like, or yells, something like that. Uh, enter or come in. And uh, Medus Perostium Intrat et Amicam Suam Salutat. So Medus. Uh, from the door comes in and uh, his friend salutes Salve mea Lydia Hi my Lydia Ecce amicus tuus qui solus Romam ad devenit um, This friend of yours who or that alone in Rome no alone to Rome comes to you something like that I'm not sure the the exact structure of the sentence but it's script this is like this friend a key I'm pretty sure I have this in my dictionary. Some words like amicus is like today's Italian. Yeah, Italian is, I guess, one of the most similar languages to Latin since, you know, they are in the same place as the Romans used to be. I also I speak Portuguese and that is also quite similar to uh, Latin. So Wiki is here, see look. So here is your friend Qui is am I right about what the meaning of Qui? Who, sure. Yes, he was so who alone? As Devenit alone in Rome comes to you. Something like that. Uh, Lydia verbis medi delectatur eumque salutat. So Lydia uh, verbis. Uh, I thought this was like to speak or words, like verb. But I think I guess I got that wrong. I can't find it here. No, that's that is right. So that is. But what what is the lectatur? When I look at you, you remind me of one footballer. Not sure which one. <laughs> well, I'm Brazilian, so. Football is in my blood, apparently, even though I don't play football at all. Uh, hello, Rawadan. I'm good, and you? Uh, the Lectatur. We have to... The Lectant isn't happy. Yeah, it's the light. So the lectator is like happily or delightfully. It's not here, but um, maybe Wiktionary knows. Uh, 
Uh, good. Rodan. Oh, when I was small kid, I loved Rivaldo, Ronaldo, and Ronaldinho. Nice. Uh, the Lectatur is the third person singular present passive indicative of the Lecto. Whatever this means. But it's not really a an adjective, it's a verb. So it's not delightfully. So it delights. This is a verb. So verb is, is not to talk to, it is the words. The word. I think s verb is a specifically a singular. No, this is... Oh no, this is verbum. I'm pretty sure v verb is this uh, word because... Sh yeah, she only said... One word anyway. Lydia verbis medi. Oh, the word, like this, the speech of Medus delights Lydia, and she greets him. That is the precise structure of the sentence. Can I ask, will the game be in any way like CK2 map, or will be map like the one you showed where Rome is highlighted in red? Uh, the map is only, only gonna show Rome and the places that Rome can expand to. There won't be other nations expanding in the map. Because the focus is gonna be on uh, Rome only. Have you tried learning with texts? A uh, program which takes in any text and has to go through and select those words which you don't know. There's a dictionary window so you can look up the word and assign definition remembers that you've learned a word and export the words into it so you can practice. Oh, that's a nice tool. I'm gonna check that out. Um, that is pretty much what I'm doing here, uh, suppose that. That is like an automation of the method I'm using right now. So it does seem like a cool choice. So will it be like you can conquer Gallic and part of Britannia too? Yeah, pretty much. But uh, map expansion is not going to be the focus, so like Johan has said that uh, Imperator Rome is going to be about map painting S and uh, Historia Realis is not going to be about map painting. It's going to be more about um, Roman politics. You play as a family in Rome and you're trying to rise in society, get elected to higher and higher uh, offices in the Cursus Honorum uh, Cursus Honorum So, you know, stuff like that Let's, Less about uh, wars and conquest and more about uh, politics in Rome um, So Lydia greets Medus and she says, Oh Amike, salve. So she's like, uh, um, It is the. The O is just like an emphasis, right? It's not. Yeah, it's just a no. The O is a no. So it's like, Oh, friend. Hi. Ubi est Dominus Tuus? Where is... So, where is your master? Because the guy is a slave. Uh, well, the game you're making is very unique. Thank you. I'm interested in like the way of life during Roman Republic. Yeah, that's what I'm, what I'm interested in too. It's not something that today's game gives, so I appreciate that you do. Thank you. I also think um, Imperator is not gonna focus too much on that. Like, something that really scares me is how there's only gonna be one console in Rome. And that's like a small thing, it's kinda nitpicky. But uh, I think it's a symptom of 
how they're not really gonna worry too much about the depth of uh, R Roman politics. Like, if they if they can't be bothered to add two consuls in Rome, which is like the most basic thing, they're not gonna be bothered to do the more, more complex stuff, which is the interesting stuff. Like uh, emergency offices, like dictatorships, and just the complexity of uh, Roman politics. Um, oh, oops. Yeah, even though there were two consuls, as it was with Hannibal Barca, Scipio, and Longus, I think it was, so that's inaccurate in game. Yeah, there there were always two consuls during the Roman Republic and also for a long time during the Empire. Even under Augustus and uh, his successors. So yeah. Uh, Medus says Julius in Villa est apud servus suus. Uh, Julius is in the, his house, his villa, uh, apud with his slaves. Neque is, neque is iam meus dominus est. So this is and, and this is not. Um, this is he. Oops, I didn't mean to highlight that all, all of that. This is he, and this is Iam is now. I always forget what Iam means. If you guys have any questions about uh, History Realis that you've been meaning to ask, please do. Also, by the way, do you... I don't think I ever mentioned uh, the meaning of Historia Realis, because, I don't know, I always... Anyway, what do you guys think think the meaning of, like, Historia Realis is? The title of the game. Uh, what, what What is that to you? I'm, I'm really curious about that. So, what is Historia Realis? The, as a title, the words, what do they mean? Uh, historical Realism. Does anyone have uh, more, ga more guesses? What do you think it is? Is there only like... True Jerry can chat? Is there no one else in chat? Oh, Spore's thinking. Story Realis, meaning, come on. Uh, True Jerry said, uh, I'm sorry that I write much history and she is my favorite. I have many books. 95% of them are historical fictions in the book you're reading now. It was written in ancient world. No, this book is actually not ancient at all. This book is um, uh, as a modern book, which is meant to teach you Latin without uh, anything else other than Latin. So it's not like a boring teaching book. It's a uh, a fun book to read that also teaches you by using very simple Latin words and introducing harder words uh, gradually. The title is like up here, Lingua Latina per se illustrata. You can find that. Uh, Chirik, I guess, is uh, historical realism. Sport guesses true history. What time is it to me? Uh, now it's 10.20 uh, p.m. in Brazil. Rodan says, I think something about the historical theme of Rome. I don't really know. Any more guesses, guys? Uh, 
what I was what I was I looking at? Eom. Yeah, I always forget Eom. Uh, it's now. Mm. This is mine. So now my dumb my now my master is. And uh, this is not. And this is and. Is this he right? Is this something else? No, he. So he, my master, is not in Rome either. This is like. What? Julius in Villa Esta Pudo Servo Sus, Nequesium. Oh, he's no longer my master. Sure. So. And not. And he is not my master. Sure. Uh, more guesses. Uh, history, reality, the real story, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's like. It's uh, real history. Or true history. Uh, the root of. Uh, Realis is res, which is thing. So it's literally an a uh, histori historia is history, as you've guessed. And uh, realis is basically real, and the root of real res is thing. So it's like uh, when you say real, you're saying something. You're turning thing into an adjective. So it's like thingy, <laughs> if you if you wanna call it that, like thankful history, thingy history. But really, it's real history or true history. That's the idea. Uh, Latin's beautiful language, so that is dying language, or dead language. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many people uh, speak Latin right now, but uh, it's fun to learn, and that is a cool language. So, verba medi alidia leta audiuntur. Um. So this is happy. And uh, this is word. And this is the words of Medus. And this is to Lydia. And this is all this to hear. So the words of Medus that Lydia hears make her happy. So she's happy that he's no longer a slave of Julius. What she doesn't know is that he escaped with his master's money. And this is probably gonna go wrong in the story. Like, he's coming for his money and his slave. Grammatic animal language, the Vacan is. Grammatica. Interesting how it's similar. Yeah, Latin uh, is the root of uh, a lot of Euro European languages, so it's not surprising how similar it is. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have some uh, boring Latin stuff. This is like the, the boring part of the book, in my opinion, because it's it's not like uh, reading stories. It's just uh, telling you how things should be. So here you have prepositions, prepositiones, 
uh, Julius ad Villam it ad Opidum ad Ancilas. So ad is two, and then the the other words have two, like um, adapt to the preposition, because he's going to the villa. Then the word villa changes from villa to villam, and this is like the annoying part of Latin. This is where it gets really hard, this declensions, how words can uh, change depending on their um, on their function in the sentence. Rawadon says it's late where I am, I'm going to sleep now, good night. Have a good time, you too, I'll see you next time. If you want to watch the video of the stream, you can just go on Twitch. And watch that later, like tomorrow. So, are, are the guys on from the the Discord here? the game have DLCs? I don't know, I'm really not thinking about that. I'm just thinking about the, the base game right now. I honestly, like, I can't answer that because there's no game yet. It's, it's a long way from being done, so there's no thought about DLCs at all. Like uh, keep going with this for a while. Ursus ante Iulium est ante eum ante villam. Davus post Iulium est post eum post villam. How oh, this is so boring. I'm just gonna skip this. It's probably a bad idea. Oh, but it's just, just uh, so annoying. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's been like half an hour of stream so far, so I'm just gonna stop here and I'll see if tomorrow I'm willing to face the boredom of Grammatica Latina or if I'm just gonna skip this and uh, jump to the story. But right now I'm gonna do like historical research like I've been doing in the past streams. Uh, to Jerry asks, so the pictures you showed us was that in-game pictures, where was Caesar just a picture? The the one with Caesar specifically it was just a picture. It was like a, what we call a mock-up. It's basically to show the idea of the game. I could put put those graphics in the game right now but there's basically no point yet because in the actual game engine I'm doing the core mechanics a bit more I like the statue thank you yeah the portraits are gonna be more busts of the Romans based on uh, real more busts that we know so now we're gonna switch to Plutarch's Fall of the Roman Republic. Uh, oh god, this music is getting intense. Uh, this is Realm 2 Total War soundtrack, so it can get pretty intense sometimes. Um, That's probably like anyway. Uh, this book is a compilation of a few of uh, the lives that Plutarch wrote. So he wrote the life of Pompey, the life of Crassus, and a bunch of other Romans, and also the life of Caesar, which we're gonna read right now. So Caesar's views, 
seemed so humane in themselves and the speech with which he backed them up was so powerful that not only did he win the support of subsequent speakers in the debate, but many too of those who had spoken before him took back the opinions which they had expressed previously and came over to his side. So this is about uh, Marius, like how he revived the ideals of Marius, who had been uh, an enemy of Sulla and so he was like... Uh, Uh, like forbidden to talk about Marius's ideals, I guess. Yeah, Marius's Caesar's uncle. That's right. Uh, until it came around to Cato. Oh no, this is actually about Catalin. That's right. We were seeing about uh, Catalin's conspiracy. Uh with uh, Cicero. So until he came round to Cato and to Catullus, who vigorously opposed him. Cato's very violent speech helped to fix suspicion on Caesar himself and to effect and the effect of his attack was that the conspirators were handed over to the executioner. And while Caesar was leaving the Senate, many of the young men who at the time were acting as Cicero's bodyguard ran, ran up with drawn swords ready to make an end of him. However, Curio, so it is said, threw his toga around him and got him away safely, saved by the, by the toga of Curio, nice. And Cicero himself, when the young man looked at him to see what his wishes were, shook his head, either because he was frightened of the people or because he thought the murder would be entirely unjust and illegal. And it would, like what? Like, Caesar was defending... Uh, the right to a trial of Catalin and the Catalin, Catalin conspirators and uh, Cicero was trying to get them killed and Cato as well uh, Spore says oh crap you just realized you stood for a final uh, good luck in your final bye bye see you tomorrow mm. So, as for the story, if it is a true one, I cannot understand why Cicero did not mention it in the book he wrote about his consulship. Certainly, however, he was blamed af afterwards for not having made use of this best of all opportunities for getting rid of Caesar and for having shown excessive fear of the people. How, what? This this isn't well, like what Cicero did. It's actually very unlike Cicero to execute the... Catalan conspirators but I guess if he did it's, it's not unlike him at all but there's there would be no reason to kill Caesar at this time wasn't Cato father of Suetonius I don't know actually so there's like Cato, father of Suetonius, I don't think so, but maybe you should look into that, maybe I'm wrong. What I know about Cato is is that this Cato is Cato the Younger, so this is the grandson of Cato the Elder. Cato the Elder. Grandson of Cato the Elder? It's like, this. was Carthage destroyed so little ago? I actually have the... The Historia Realis image I made, I can look that up, because it's like... What I have in my mind is that uh, Cato... Uh, this Cato is Cato the Younger, grandson of Cato the Elder, and Cato the Elder was the guy that said Carthage must be destroyed, Cartago de Landaist. He always ended his speeches in the Senate with the sentence. And uh, and Carthage was destroyed after he died. So was was it so recently? I guess it was. Uh. 
Um, so Carthage was destroyed in 146 BC, that's right. And Caesar was born in 100, so this is like... Uh, and the, we're talking about uh, Cicero's consulship here, so this is like... Uh, 60 BC or so. So that that adds up. Because uh, I read the one who was executed and his children sold to slavery, but I'm not sure. No, uh, what? Cato killed himself, he wasn't executed. Hmm. Oh, the music is like not loud enough now. Okay. But really, but in the book he was captured and Caesar watched him dying, or they cut his head off. That is not what happened to Cato. Maybe you're thinking of Cicero? Because Cicero's head was cut off. There's the story about uh, Fulvia uh, inserting pins into Cicero's mouth, Cicero's tongue. It's like, where's the sharpness of your tongue now that you're dead? And yeah, the, his head was cut off, but not... That was Cicero, not Cato. Cato just killed himself by... Uh, stabbing himself in the stomach and his entrails fell off. And the doctors tried to put them back inside and sue him up, but he ripped open the wounds, so he would die. It was uh, Cato's death is pretty well known because it was like really dramatic because of the description I just gave. In fact, a few days later, when Caesar attended the meeting of the Senate and while attempting to clear himself of the suspicions fell against him, met with a most hostile and nice reception. Oh god, the music is intense again. The people, seeing that the session of the Senate was lasting longer than usual, came up in a tumultuous mob and surrounded the Senate House, shouting for Caesar and demanding that he should be let go. This is why Cato, who feared above all things that there might be a revolution starting from the poorer classes, who, with their hopes fixed on Caesar, were kindling a fire among the general population, persuaded the Senate to give them a monthly rash, ration of grain, which meant an addition to the expenditure of the state of 71 uh, something 2 million drachmas a year. And a half? I don't know. Nevertheless, this was a measure which definitely had the effect of removing the great fear that was felt at the time. It weakened and dispersed Caesar's power Uh, just at the right moment, he had been elected praetor for the next year and could have been more formidable still in his office. Uh, 
Okay. It's actually sad about Caesar's death on 15 March. Don't go inside because you'll be assassinated. Yeah, I've read about that. Someone tried to warn him and he didn't read the notes. And three days later he wanted to do campaign against Parthia. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But I mean, he did make himself dictator, so that's what happens, I guess. As it happened, there were no disturbances during his praetorship. There was only a somewhat unfortunate affair which concerned his domestic life. Oh, this incident, I never understood it quite well, so I guess here's my chance. Publius Clodius came from a patrician family and was distinguished both for his wealth and for his powers as an orator. But in his capacity for behaving quite outrageously, he surpassed all the most notorious evil livers of his time. So Publius Clodius was wealthy, he was a good orator, but he was evil. Uh, this man was in love with Caesar's wife, Pompeia, who did not reject his advances. Oh, oh that's gonna go around. However, the woman's part of the house was closely supervised and Caesar's mother, Aurelia, was a person of strict respectability. She never let the young wife out of her sight, and so made it difficult and dangerous for the lovers to meet. Okay. So this Publius Clodius guy was after uh, Caesar's wife Pompeia, and she was into it. The Romans have a goddess. Oh God! Intense music. Calm down. Okay. There we go. Can I ask which site you're using for downloading PDF? I don't remember where I got this. But uh, this is like uh, this text by Plutarch is the uh, it's public domain. So you can find this online, it's uh, public domain. Romans have a goddess who they call the good goddess, the same one as the Greeks call the women's goddess. The Frisians claim this goddess as their own and say that she was the mother of King Midas. The Romans say that she was one of the nymphs called Dryads and then was married to Faunus. Oh god, this is just some theogony. The Greeks say that she is the, the one of the mothers of Dionysus, whose name must not be spoken. And this is why the women, when they are celebrating her festival, cover the tents with branches of vine and in accordance with the myth have a sacred snake enthroned at the goddess side. What does this what does this have to do with Caesar? It is not lawful for a man to be present at the rites oh okay. Nor even to be in the house where they are being celebrated. The women perform the sacred ceremonies by themselves, and the ceremonies are said to be very much like those of the Orphix. When the time for the festival comes, the consul or praetor at which house it is being held goes away. Mm. As does every male creature in the household. Okay, so this festival was going on at Caesar ha Caesar's house. Uh, his wife then takes over the house and arranges the decorations. The most important ceremonies take place by night, the women play together among themselves during the night long celebrations, and there is much music as well. So this is like a women only festival. Now I remember what I wanted to ask, do you think it's correct to put on Imperator Rome that Romans were a Hellenic religion? I'm sure Roman religion was similar to Greek but still was called differently. And I don't want to see Hellenic in Rome and Hellenic in Greece. Uh, I 
I personally wouldn't call Roman religion Hellenic. Because if if you're saying the two are equal, then they're not. So yeah. I mean sure Roman religion came from from Greek religion in a bit, you know, in places, but not not even exclusively. Roman religion had like Etruscan religion mixed in. There were like uh, specifically Roman deities, deities. So I wouldn't say it's Hellenic. It's Hellenic influenced, but they'd, they'd be separate religions. Mm. So, on this occasion, when Pompeia was in charge of the celebrations, Claudius, who was still beardless and therefore thought that he would escape notice, dressed himself up as a female flute player. Oh god. This is a funny story. And looking just like a young woman arrived at the house. He found the door open and was brought inside quite safely by the maid on duty who was in the secret. The maid then ran off to tell Pompeia. Time passed and Claudius lacked the patience to stay where he had been left. He began to wonder about the house, which was a very large one, trying to avoid the lights, and was accosted by one of Aurelia's servants who, as one woman to another, asked him to come and play with her. When Claudius said no, she dragged him forward and asked him who he was and where he came from. Claudius said that he was waiting for Pompeius' girl, Abra the name of the maid who had introduced him, but his voice gave him away. <laughs> Aurelia's servant shrieked them and ran off to where the lights and the crowd were, crying out that she had caught the man. The women were in a panic. Aurelia put a stop to the sacred rites of the goddess and covered up the holy things. She then ordered the doors to be shut and went all over the house with lighted torches in search of Claudius. He was found hiding in the room belonging to the maid who had let him into the house, and when it was discovered who he was, the woman drove him out of the, do out of the doors. They then went away immediately while it was still night and told their husbands what had happened. As soon as it was day, the word was going about the city that Claudius had committed sacrilege and owed satisfaction not only to those who had been outraged by his conduct, but also to the city and to the gods. This guy's fucked. Oops, sorry for cursing. One of the tribunes, therefore, officially uh, indicted, indicted Claudius for sacrilege and the most influential members of the Senate band banded themselves together against him. Yeah, what the hell. Uh, they gave evidence of a number of shocking crimes which he had committed, among which was adultery with his sister, who was the wife of Lucullus. Oh god, oh dear. Uh, was this made up, or was this true? The people, however, set themselves against this party of the nobility, and their defense of Claudius was very useful to him, so far as the jury were concerned. Who took alarm and were terrified of the members numbers of his supporters. Caesar divorced Pompeia at once, but when he was called as a witness at the trial, he said that he knew nothing about the charges against Claudius. Because in pictures it was in Hellenic Roman. Oh, I guess what they're trying to do then is like divide the religions by type, like types and subtypes subtypes. So Hellenic is like a broad type for a few religions and Roman is the specific one. Uh, I can see why they do that because Roman religion was more similar to Hellenic religion than to like Indian religion because the map is going to stretch really far. So maybe they want to show how uh, these two groups 
would uh, get along easier than if something that's really far. So yeah, I can see that, why they do that. I don't know how accurate it is, but I understand. Uh, this seems as a most surprising thing to say, and the prosecuting counsel asked, in that case, why did you divorce your wife? Because, said Caesar, I consider that my wife ought not to be even suspected. I'm gonna quote this. It's gonna be like a divorce. Sh divorce should be a part of the game, right? And um, also, that festival sounds cool. The women only festival. That could be in the game as well. Story of Realis. Do you read historical fictions? I haven't read historical fiction in a while. Do you have any recommendations? Like. Especially Roman. I can't quite remember what was my last historical fiction book. Mm. Some say that in giving this evidence, Caesar really meant what he said. According to others, he was acting in order to please the people who were determined to save Claudius. At any rate, Claudius was acquitted of the charge. Most of the jurymen handed in their votes in elig eligible writing so that they might avoid the risks both of violence from the people if they condemned him and of contempt from the nobility if they acquitted him. That's like really funny way to vote, right? You don't want to side with anyone, so you just write some gibberish on the paper that nobody can read that's kind of dumb there's a good book from Frank Macklin Marcus Aurelius it's a really good book nice so check it out do you have any on the Roman Republic uh, because Marcus Aurelius is in in the imperial period. But uh, I'm really sleepy, so I'm not gonna keep reading this. I'm gonna end it right here. And next time we're gonna start at uh, 11. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, today I, I got the new one of these images, the Roman of the week. First one was Cato and then we had Caesar. And today we had uh, Cicero. And you can find this uh, these images on the History Realis social media stuff. So, like uh, twitter.com slash History Realis. You can find all the links on the site. I Claudio is definitely the best historical novel I've read. I haven't read that, but I've, uh, I've watched the TV show. Have you watched that? Uh, I suppose that. It's, a, it's an old TV show, I think it's British, from like the, what is it, 70s, 80s? I really enjoy that show. It starts with Augustus, old Augustus, and it goes all the way to Nero, I think. Or just Caligula. Um... And yeah, it was a 
really cool and it was based on the novel. <clears throat> but I haven't read the actual novel. Maybe I should. But it's it's also Imperial. Uh, no, I've not seen the TV show. Take a look at it. It's just checking out the book as well. Yeah, I should try it. I got a book, book which has like 20 books about from Republic. Nice. What's that book? Verpus's Word. Yeah, it is. But only now I'm seeing like the old chat from the Discord. Anyway, if you haven't already, follow the stream and go to historiorealis.com for the all the links and cool stuff. Oh yeah, I think this is gonna be about it. About it for today. Uh, the thirteen books, Roma Sub Rosa ser series. Sorry, I'm gonna check that out. Uh, thanks for the recommendation. Uh -huh. To Jarek. And uh, thanks everyone for watching the stream. I'm gonna be ending it here. So thanks for the follow. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna stream earlier. So I think uh, three hours earlier than today. So like you know four times earlier four hours earlier than now thanks for watching and uh see you tomorrow or like the day after tomorrow just follow so you can uh get notified when i start and uh bye guys Thanks for the support.